July 26 of 2010. Yeah, that's right. 14 years ago. 14 years ago today, I was in Las Vegas. I was homeless. My life was a mess. I was addicted to methamphetamines. I was shooting up every day. I was robbing and stealing from everybody I could even get close to. You were in my way. You were probably getting taken advantage of in some way, shape, or form. That was just what my life had come to, to feed my addiction. Because addiction will do that to you. It changes the way that you think. It changes how you perceive things. And it makes you do things that you just don't want to do. Things that you would never dream of doing. All those morals and standards and all that other stuff that you may have grown up with and had. And, and things that you held tight to. Yeah, all those are out the window when dope comes calling. And that's where I was 14 years ago. I remember that day like it was yesterday. I woke up that morning, it was a Monday, and I woke up that morning and I knew something was different. There was a different electricity in the air, if that makes any sense. You know, I went through some motions and then, you know, I had this opportunity to, you know, fulfill my greed, you know, to sell some more dope. And that's what ended up taking me down. I wanted to blame that on somebody for so long. Like, oh, this person set me up and that person set me up. Man, I was a bad drug dealer and I had no other intent for anything or anybody else other than just myself. I just wanted to get high. And so all of that led to this moment now in Las Vegas and I get arrested and I felt like that was God reaching into my life and saying, I'm taking you out. I'm going to set you down over here right now to get your attention, to slow you down, to make your mind clear enough that you can actually hear what I'm trying to tell you. It didn't happen right away. I'll tell you that. Like I, I fought that for probably at least a good six months. But July 26 of 2010, that's when that process started. It's when my thought process changing started. That's when I had to make a decision and draw a line in the sand. Was I choosing sobriety today or was I going to continue doing the same old thing that I had done for so many years because I didn't want to deal with whatever was going on up here and right here? So it was in that prison cell that God got a hold of me. I heard him say as clear as day, are you done yet? Because I'm here. I'm waiting on you. I felt a hand stretched out to me. I had family that I don't know why, but they still continued to write me. They continued to pray for me. They would ask their friends in church to pray. They would pray in Bible studies. I bring this up because sometimes we can flippantly say, oh, I'll pray for you. Don't do that. If you're going to pray for somebody, pray for them because there's power in that prayer. So that'd be like saying to somebody, I'm going to save your life, but then not doing it. I've got a lifesaver, life raft thing here, right? Whatever they call those things on boats. You know what I'm talking about. But to say that you have it, but then not use it. See, what I'm, see where I'm going with that? So I believe in the power of prayer. I believe that you got to start putting one foot in front of the other when it comes to making some hard decisions in life. And that's what the prison experience really did for me. It got me to slow down long enough to really contemplate, like, what am I doing with life? You know, I have a high school education. I didn't have any college. I've always worked in sales jobs. So it was always kind of a, you know, just earn what you can. I was scared in prison because I knew I'm going to get out and I'm going to have this huge gap. What am I going to do with my life? I'm going to get out and I'm going to have child support. I'm going to get out and I'm going to have all this stuff to do. How do I do that? Because leading up to prison, remember, I'm just running the streets. 
how many other people like that are running the streets right now and then we want to just expect them to magically be better because they got sober. It doesn't really work like that. It's a process for people. It was a process for me. You know, I had a lot of encouragement and a lot of support, and I thank God for everybody who's been there in my life. I really do. I thank God for all of the support and the encouragement that I get today. It's humbling. I look at myself sometimes like I'm a no good drug addict that doesn't deserve anything, a thief. And I get so much grace. I get so much love. I get so much encouragement and support from all of you guys. You know, I've met people running and speaking at places and jobs that I've worked at. And my friends list just amazes me. I love you guys. Each one of you plays this little part in my life that has gotten me to where I'm at today. And today is July 26th of 2024. 14 years later, sober, I haven't shoved a needle in my arm in 14 years. I haven't snorted a line of cocaine in 14 years. I haven't stolen somebody's identity and gone out on a shopping spree in 14 years. I love working for a prison ministry today. Tell me that's not God. I'm working today for the prison ministry that ministered to me while I was in prison. That's how big God is. Today, I spent my entire day, I started my day off at Crossroads Prison Ministry speaking to the board about this beautiful gift of sobriety that one of our students had and how impactful it was for me to read a letter from a student in prison to our board on this day because this is the day that I got arrested, but this is the day that my life started to change. So I'm sorry that I'm rambling here a little bit, but I want you to know that God is so big. He is so amazing, and He can do infinitely more than what your small mind can ever imagine, small imagination, because we limit what God can do. I'm telling you right now, while I was sitting in that jail cell, I knew my life was going to look different. When I was spending that last year in prison, and I was already on a really good path, last year I still had no clue what my life was going to look like, and I definitely could not have scripted it to what it is today. So if you're in one of those places today where you're like, I have no idea how to even move forward, I don't know how to take the next step, this big situation is just too big for me, I don't know what to do, I'm telling you. Just take one step at a time, one breath at a time, okay? Focus on doing the next right thing. Get yourself a support system. Don't be afraid to reach out to people. I left prison knowing I had to change two things about my life. I had to be more transparent, and I had to be accountable to people. And the funny thing is when you do the one, transparency, you automatically become accountable to those people. So that's the funny gift how that works, and that has worked so well for me. So I just encourage you today, find your support network. Don't be afraid to reach out. Don't let shame ruin and run your life. The past is the past, and it's been forgiven. Leave it at the cross and move forward. Thank you. If you're listening and you made it this far, thank you. Thank you, seriously for the support, the encouragement, the love, all of it. I love you guys, and I hope the next 14 years is just as crazy as this past 14 years. Have a blessed day.